Moon Knight, the new show on Disney+, Plus, the MCU show, that obviously features Moon Knight. I made a video covering this, or at least the covering the character, so people can you know get an insight on him and learn about him before going into the show, since I think he's a pretty dope character, and I, I love him. And I think everyone else is doing the same now, that the episode's been out for almost a week now. And I didn't think I was going to make a video like this, covering the episode, but that video did well, and I also do want to talk about the show and what I think of it, so I'm just going to make videos on each episode. There's only six episodes in the show anyways, so it, there's not going to be that many. The first episode of Moon Knight puts us in the shoes and perspective of Stephen Grant, an employee at a gift shop at a museum, like a history museum, and it comes to no surprise, working at a museum will see some Egyptian kind of history and lore. Since, especially since we all know already that that has some aspect in the character itself of Moon Knight. And like I mentioned before in the other Moon Knight video, I did say Stephen Grant was a billionaire and he was a wealthy man, which he is in the comics, but in the show they turned him into the kind of average person. And obviously we learned there's more to Stephen Grant as we go on in the episode. Like him locking himself to his bed, the sand around his mattress, etc., all that. And Stephen Grant has sleeping problems. Like he said, <laughs> he can't tell between his dreams and his awakened life, or whatever he said. He can't tell his dreams apart from his actual reality. He's having not only trouble in sleeping, but even while he's sleeping. Because he wakes up in different places and finds things in different orders and finds things in different places. And he has no clue what's going on, and he seems very confused and everything's bizarre around him, and he has no clue what's going on. It has a very ambiguous and sort of like mysterious nuance to it, which I really like, because the people watching the show aren't going to know what it is unless you know the character already and you know the story behind this character. You already know what's going on and why all this stuff is happening when he's asleep. The plot of the show itself unravels as we go on with Stephen Grant waking up in this random field in the like, middle of nowhere, basically, and he comes across this group of people down in a nearby town and ends up becoming an audience member in this judging that's going on. And the person that's doing the judging is using a, his tattoo of a balance scale on his wrist to judge people and making people offer their souls and their morals to basically be judged and whether or not this person and a higher authority, which they look, which he looks up to, and his members, I guess, this, this is kind of like a cult. Him and his the people who look up to him not only look up to him, but look up to a god. And a god is named Amit. So now we learn in this show, and our antagonist, Harrow, I'm pretty sure his name was, the guy with the uh, tattoo, we learn that Amit is another god that is involved, and Khonshu, the moon god, that gave Mark Spector, or Stephen Grant, more of Mark Spector, because again, different personalities, the suit and capabilities of being Moon Knight, isn't the only ancient deity. And again, the antagonist is judging people off of the beliefs of this god, Amit, and whether or not their soul is good and which path they will go down in life, like later on. Then we learn about Amit later from Harrow in the museum towards the end of the episode because Stephen has a scarab, this golden relic that he has no clue how he got, but we know that it's from when he was a different personality. And he transitioned over back to Stephen Grant and took control of his body and he has no clue how he has a scarab or anything that's going on. And Harrow and his followers refer to Amit as the scarab, and they need to get it back from Stephen. And then we get these awesome scenes where where everything gets really dark, and Stephen like blacks out, and his eyes roll back to the back of his head, and he basically just blacks out. And then a second later, he, he wakes up, he, he's conscious again, and he's covered in blood. His fists are bloodied, he's scratched, he's beat, he's bruised, and everyone around him is unconscious, or maybe even dead. And we all know this is his personality is shifting and transitioning from Stephen Grant to Mark Spector. I've seen somewhere, well, pretty much a lot of places that each episode is going to take place in the shoes of a different personality in Mark's head, or Stephen's head, and I like it. I do, I do like that. But anyways, I'm not sure if it's true or not. It seems true, because this first episode was really just from the perspective of Stephen Grant. That's why we don't get a perspective of Mark Spector beating on his foes 
and the followers getting slaughtered, basically. But it was interesting, and I really like them scenes a lot, actually. I really like how he it really, really it gets really dark, and he blacks out, and he wakes up just to be found in like a pool of blood around him, and it's not his own blood. And I found it really cool, and it's a really cool way to have the personality shifting without showing it too. And the whole reason of this happening, and the reason why he has to fight, and just has a fight in general, is because of the scarab again that they refer to as Amit. And we don't know the full story, obviously, because we don't see Mark's side of things or the Moon Knight side of things in this until the very end of it, which was awesome, by the way. That weird-ass creature at the end have, and Mark fighting with Steven in his own head for him to take his body over and fight for him and defend himself, and it was really damn badass. And it made for a pretty good first introduction to him. Plus, the thing that they didn't even have to do, but they did anyways, and just made it ten times more awesome were the hieroglyphs and all the Egyptian writing imprinting themselves on the walls and the mirrors around him when he's transitioned into Moon Knight was just flat out really damn cool. Obviously, it's going to be more straightforward with us going on with the whole idea of Kanchu and how Moon Knight came to be. And it's going to be more obvious to us and they're probably going to straight out tell us. But in this first episode, it really makes it seem like there's so many where it really tells you that there's so many connections and hidden meanings and ties connecting Stephen Grant to Kanju, the moon god, without telling us, and it still leaves a mystery with it, and I think they did a phenomenal job with that kind of idea in this episode. And also about the scarab that Harrow and his followers refer to as Amit, the golden beetle relic that Stephen has that he's not sure how he has, which... I think we all do all do know and can tell that it was Mark Spector that actually took it, and it was Moon Knight's job. But we don't know that. Well, we know that, but we don't see it because of this episode solely being based off of Stephen Grant's perspective. But the Scarab, again, they refer to it as Amit, and Amit is another deity like Kanchu. It's some godlike figure that they look up to, and is basically a punisher of evildoers. Hera says this in the episode, but not everyone would have caught it. And that's why I'm explaining it now. But basically, like we see, Amit has the power to punish evildoers. And like Harrow does with the tattoo that he has of the balance scale, he judges people whether or not their soul is good. It's either on the right or wrong side of things. And he lets Steven know that Amit was betrayed by their avatar, or by its avatar. And the avatar of Amit was Kanshu, the moon god. So we have... Harrow looking up to or being uninfluenced by Amit and then Mar Stephen Grant or we, he doesn't know that but Mark Spector being under the influence of Kanchu. And then we get the conflict of when Harrow tries to judge Stephen we see that he's the first person that the scale was not able to judge. And this is not only because of just a small scale kind of thing with him just judging Stephen, but it goes on a higher, much more ancient level of things with going back to the deities of Kanchu and Amit. And again with Kanchu, the moon god, he talks to Stephen directly, well, not directly, but it's in Stephen's head, and he hears Kanchu talking to him, it's this like, unknown deep voice that talks to him about that episode, and he has no clue, but he has some reason to follow it. He follows it for some odd reason, and for him, like he has no control but he does it anyways just because his mind is messing with him. Regardless of what it is, he does do what he says and he follows the voice. So we see a good relationship kind of thing with Kanchu and Steven already in this first episode. And just like I said in the last Moon Knight video, Kanchu is real and that's how Moon Knight came to be. But in Steven's head in this case, he's going to see him and hear him, but it's not actually the god. It's just in his mind. Even though the god does exist... He still sees hallucinations and hears things in his mind because of his mental illness. And I think they did a pretty good job with that. We really have no idea what to expect with this show and what's to come. The first episode, I think, was really good. and I really did enjoy it thoroughly. And I cannot wait to see what they do with it. Again, it's a six-part episode show that is on Disney Plus now, airing the first episode with the second episode coming out soon. And, of course, it's called Moon Knight. And this has been the video. I think that's all that I have to talk about and just talk about the episode overall and my thoughts on it. I'm excited to see the rest of it and what they do with it, but I did enjoy it.
Let me know what you think of it, if you saw it, or if you want to see it. And then come back to me if you want. But this has been the video. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it greatly. Like, comment, etc. You know, all that common YouTube stuff that you hear everywhere else. But that has been the video. Thank you again. This has been Ghosty, and I bid you all farewell.